So in this video, I thought I'd talk about battery balancing and specifically LFP battery balancing, which is the battery chemistry that's used for Fox batteries. It's very common. Uh, there's even cars now that have LFP cells. So all of the rear wheel drive Tesla vehicles, they're all LFP cells. Um, almost every battery, uh, house battery is LFP with a few exceptions. So some of the uh, manufacturers like the Tesla Powerwall, they're using an, an MC, so a nickel manganese cobalt or um, an aluminium equivalent of them. So there's um, there's a few battery chemistries that are very popular right now for their uh, energy density and their lifespan and cycle count, etc. Um, thermal tolerance, thermal uh, threshold. So, but for house batteries you'll typically find LFP, and that's what Fox uses across their whole range. Um, so we'll talk about those. Now, I thought I'd run an experiment. What I'm showing you here is we're looking at the state of charge for one of my inverters, which has got a, a HV2600 battery stack connected to it. And in addition, it's um, the voltage of the battery. But I also have my second battery stack here as well because you can see that this isn't just a one-off phenomenon. I've got two battery packs, identical in configuration, so eight times 2,600 batteries, um, two inverters, everything's identical. All of them are paralleled and peered, so everything is a pretty fair test. They're located next to each other, so there's no environmental factor. And within a few hours of each other, I noticed a sort of balancing issue starting to occur. So I thought I'd just walk through, give my thoughts and give my solution. So uh, looking at the state of charge, I thought it would be a good idea a few weeks ago, uh, I think we're on second or third week of, of ha making this tweak. I thought I would set the maximum state of charge for my battery pack to 70 and then I increased it to 75 with the idea being, I'm going to run an experiment and see if my daily use can kind of keep my batteries during the summer months between sort of 50 and 70%, which is the middle of the battery is the area that you'll cause the least wear and tear on the battery long term. So how would it work? And over many years of doing this every summer, could I extend my battery uh, life and my battery performance by trying to keep the batteries within that middle area, 50% state of charge. So I thought, right, if I start with 75% state of charge and then over the evening until I reach my cheap overnight window, it will drop by a little bit. And you can see that's basically what's been happening. So um, 24th is a, is a good example. It charges up on the cheap rate overnight, reaches its maximum state of charge of 75%, which is what... Um, what I had it set to and because I've got a charging window uh, set as you can see here any time the battery just drops by a percent it just gives it a little top up so these little tiny dips here are just where the batteries are sort of stabilizing the BMS uh, has a draw it's a it's 100 watts or so just to run all of the systems so these little pencils that are dropping below this this 75 line are just that so it's just keeping itself topped up all the way to 5.30 in the morning when my Intelligent Octopus Go energy tariff stops and then it starts discharging to the house. And you can see that's what this bar here is. Um, and then around, I imagine around this sort of time is when the sun is at a point where the solar panels are energized and starting to cover the house loads. So that all makes sense. If I could do this every day, charge it to 75 and then it basically will run flat throughout the day with a little bit of surplus charging going on in the in the late afternoon and then you know rinse and repeat goes back down when the sun goes down and then charges on that cheap tariff this is where I changed it to 70% so I was running it to 75 and then I changed it the following day to 70 because I'm trying to keep it around this sort of 50ish percent of charge and then I noticed this issue. So the following day, after many weeks of running it at 75%, uh, it goes and jumps straight up from, from 70% all the way up to 100. 
and then kind of repeats the same. There's this very sharp jump. So wherever you see uh, almost vertical lines, in this case it is vertical, in, in something like Home Assistant or whatever data analysis tool you're using, that's not normal. You can't have a battery that jumps like that. So the BMS, the battery management system, is looking at the voltage which is going on down here and it's figuring out, right, so I know how much energy's come in and left the battery. I know what voltage the cells are at. I know what temperature the cells and the environments within. And it, it creates a calculation of where it thinks the actual state of charge is. So something has confused it, possibly even me just changing the max state of charge to 70 from 75, but something has caused it to be very jumpy. Uh, and you can see that the battery voltage, although these are very sharp lines, if you look at the actual voltage difference across the dozens and dozens of cells that are in every battery pack, you know, multiplied across the whole battery stack, uh, typical usage is only fluctuating, well, it's, it's really just milliamps at most, and uh, millivolts, sorry, and uh, with, uh, you know, the force charging really seeing that, you know, a few, you know, what's that? It's going to be somewhere like 25. Yeah, so what's that, 20 volts different across the entire pack, which that's just a, a voltage spike. You can see here that it actually prefers to sit at, what's that, 430 volts for those DC. So the problem is lithium-ion phosphate batteries have a, a very narrow operating voltage um, it's normally around something like 3.6 volts. Um, so 3.3 volts is where they're normally full. It varies a little bit by the chemistry and the size of the cell, but roughly speaking, uh, somewhere around 3 volts is, is kind of full. And the trouble is, empty is, is not much less. So it's something like 2.7, 2.8 volts is considered empty. So there's a very tiny voltage difference between empty and full, um, which is where you get these problems with kind of calibration and battery because if if there's such a small difference the BMS is having to do a lot of estimating and guessing to figure out where where the floor is and where the ceiling is in terms of how full or empty the battery is it doesn't want to let the battery run uh, too low because then there's uh, there's an adverse problem where you start to damage the battery cells so it has to kind of try and keep it above 10% of its state of charge uh, to try and protect the cells. It doesn't want them to run flat ever because that's very uh, bad for LFP cells. And when it gets full, it wants to then cut off the charging because it doesn't want to overcharge these cells. So the, the battery management system in my setup is a separate box on top of my batteries. It looks like a battery, but it's actually just a management system for the HV2600, the Myra25, these are very similar looking box. If you've got a cube battery, it's actually all built into the master uh, battery that's on the top. So what do you do to resolve this? Well, um, the easiest way is to do what's called cycling. So it's to uh, use the battery capacity and then to charge it. And depending on how fast you discharge it and how fast you charge it, you can have different results in terms of how it calibrates. So the best way of calibrating a battery is to do a long but a slow discharge down to its lowest level of around 10%. Keep it at 10% for, say, an hour if possible, and then to do the slowest charge you can all the way back up to 100. Keep it at 100 for an hour or so and then repeat that process two or three times over a few days, and then your BMS will be able to figure out and recalibrate itself where the floor, where the ceiling is, and the state of charge becomes accurate. So I did a very small example of this, just to see what the... So you can see on the evening of the 25th going to the 26th, I had the same issue where I had a, a very sharp jump from 89 to 99% just instantly. So I've still got a balancing issue. The following evening, I discharged it in the evening very gently over a period of hours down to a certain level. And then I charged it very gently 
on the other side and you can see it's already starting to respond positively so it's it's a nice climbing number versus a sharp jump and I only discharged it a small amount down to what was it 83% so you can see how quickly the BMS in these kind of temperatures in a British summer, uh, which is optimum for LFP, um, you can see that if you did this all the way down to 10%, all the way up to 100 again, did that gently, and I've got a video on how to set the charge and the discharge current lower so it slows all of that down. If you could do that once or twice, you'd basically instantly resolve the balance problem. There is a different issue uh, and there's different circumstances. So for a for a, a pack of batteries that have been sat there for many months or years, doing this little trick of slowing down the discharge, slowing down the charge, and doing a few cycles like that will be fine. The other times you notice this problem is during the summer months for solar because you're you're basically shallow charging it. So your battery is never going down to empty. You're just topping it up every day with solar. And then you're using a little bit in the uh, early more late evening and early morning until a cheap charging window, or if you're just using it overnight with a light load. But if your battery is never properly discharging, it, it loses track of where it is, and you'll have a similar issue. So we see these topics pop up all the time over the summer months as solar charging basically takes over most of your energy needs, and you shallow use your battery over many weeks. Again, easy to resolve, doing a gentle discharge and a gentle charge deliberately, you'll be able to resolve that. So that's what's happening over the summer months and why we typically see more of these posts about state of charge jumping very sharply like this. That's why it's probably because your solar is just allowing your batteries to shallow charge. The best thing about this is that it doesn't do any damage. So whilst it's a little bit annoying to see, that the state of charge is losing its accuracy until you do some cycling, um, it's not actually hurting it at all. As soon as you start to cycle it, the battery management system recalibrates and it's back to normal. There's no harm being caused here because the battery management system will protect the battery using its, its voltage uh, parameters. So this isn't actually a problem. It's more of an, an annoying side effect of LFP batteries because they're really great at doing large cycles. They're not so great at short, shallow cycles. So that's what's going on there. The only other thing to mention is that if you've added a battery recently, you will see uh, issues like this whilst that battery starts to balance and uh, calibrate itself in and amongst the other batteries. The, uh, the the larger the difference in state of charge, so if you should try and install a battery with the existing pack at 50%, because the new pack is normally charged to 50%. So when you introduce it, there's less uh, calibration and acclimatizing to happen between those cells. I have seen it where people have fully charged their stack, they've installed a new battery at 50% and it's taken um, it's taken many weeks to properly calibrate and settle down a full a full cycling. So if you've added a battery and you're seeing this kind of behavior, it is normal. The cure is the same. A long, slow charge to 10%, a long, slow charge up to 100%, repeating that process a number of times, and you should start to see it all settle down. This process gets harder in winter. So LFP cells are sensitive to temperature, um, and when the batteries are colder, this process is far harder to do. So the summer months right now is, is fine. No really need to worry about it. Uh, if you notice a little bit of a balance issue happening in the background, but try to get all of this organized before it turns cold at the end of the year, because it's significantly harder to balance packs. I'd almost go as far to say try to avoid adding extra batteries in the winter just because I have seen how long it takes some of the some of our customers to get their, their pack performing uh, correctly again. Again, there's no harm being done. Nothing's actually wrong. It's all just taking time to sort of chemically balance and the voltages to stabilize across the, uh, the pack. If you leave your... Uh, expansion a long time so the recommendation is that you expand your batteries ideally uh, within 12 months 
there's no hard date, but that's just what has been advised. So if you have a three or a four year old system and you add a brand new battery to it, your new battery will probably, you'll have some balancing issues like this for sure, but you'll also notice that your new battery will only ever be able to get to the voltage uh, and the capacity of the worst performing battery in your entire stack. So you may have some, some unused performance capacity when you're adding a new battery to an old system. It's not recommended because it can put additional stress on the older, older batteries, but it, it, does, it does work and there's some people that have scaled after a couple of years and it's, it's worked absolutely fine. What that means long term over 10, 15 years in terms of performance and life expectancy, we don't know. So that's really the summary of what I have um, noticed around battery balancing with LFP with the Fox system, seeing this issue where if you're shallow charging your batteries for many weeks, you get this unbalanced issue, but it is very easy and quick to solve and to do all of your, um, your balancing, uh, you know, regularly, if, if you can, ideally, you should be able to cycle your batteries, you know, once a week, once a month, that type of thing. You probably would never notice this issue. But if it does start to crop up or you want to scale your batteries, uh, try to do that when the ambient air temperatures are a bit warmer. It just makes the whole process that much easier. But interested in your thoughts and comments and just wanted to show you how the state of charge can kind of go out of whack and how that relates to a very narrow voltage uh, range with LFP, which is really the source of it all. But we as customers gain all that benefit by having a battery that can do thousands of cycles, go from 10% to 100% and back down to 10 and do that multiple times a day for over a decade. It, the, it is, it is a, um, a worthwhile trade-off uh, for, the, for the chemistry. So yeah, interested in your thoughts. Hope this helps some people and just explains and it shows what the symptoms look like and what a, uh, a resolution could could be. If you're interested in how to set your inverters charge and discharge rates to a lower amperage, I've checked my videos out. I've got a recent video that shows you how to do that and do a couple cycles like that. Should be back to normal. Thanks.